Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 2 Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, O ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Carathites. The word of the Lord is against you. O Cain and the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds, and folds for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah, they shall feed thereupon. In the houses of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them, and turn away their captivity. I have heard the reproach of Moab, and the revilings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people, and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of nettles, and salt pits, and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. This shall they have for their pride because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword, and he will stretch out his hand against the north, and destroy Assyria, and will make Nineveh a desolation, and dry like a wilderness, and flocks, shall lie down in the midst of her, all the beasts of the nations. Both the cormorant and the bittern shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he shall uncover the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How is she become a desolation? a place for beasts to lie down in. Every one that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. Chapter 43 And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words, then spake Azariah the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan the son of Korea, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch the son of Neriah setteth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death, and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Johanan the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people, obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan the son of Korea and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations whither they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children and the king's daughters, and every person that Nebuzar Adam the captain of the God had left with Gedaliah the son of Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Neriah. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they even to Tarpanhes. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah in Tarpanhes, saying, Take great stones in thine hand, and hide them in the clay in the brick kill, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tarpanhes, in the sight of the men of Judah. And say unto them, 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadrezzar the king of Babylon my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. And when he cometh, he shall smite the land of Egypt, and deliver such as are for death to death, and such as are for captivity to captivity, and such as are for the sword to the sword. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captives. And he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd putteth on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. He shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh that is in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. The song says, Safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. And as we enter the Sabbath hours, may we do so with a sense of reverence and gratitude to God for guiding us through the traffic and the hustle and bustle of the week's activity so that we can be alive and well at the end of another work week. May God's blessing be on you and your families as we prepare at the going down of the sun to worship God and to enter the church to gather with the saints to worship him as he commanded and as we honor the seventh day Saturday Sabbath. Today we are focusing on Zephaniah chapter 2 and Jeremiah chapter 43. Jeremiah chapter 43 and Zephaniah chapter 2. I'm reading now Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 3. The Bible says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Again, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Today's message is entitled, The Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we come now asking again, that you will speak to each of us. May we hear your voice through the pages of the Bible, and may we once again understand your stubborn love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the belief that Jesus Christ will return to earth someday is held by 62% of all Americans, according to George Gallup, in a work called Religion in America, Leadership Fall 1987. And I trust that those figures still remain. Now Zephaniah the prophet spoke of the coming of Jesus in the book that bears his name. You know, like the prophets of the Bible, the other minor prophets, the book of Zephaniah is simply called by the name of the author, Zephaniah. And once again, we know nothing of this prophet aside from what he says of himself in his book. Now it seems from Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 1 that Zephaniah came from a distinguished family. The fact that he traces his ancestry back to Hezekiah, the king, may be taken as an indication that he refers to the king of Judah who bore his name and thus implies his royal heritage. He was a descendant from Hezekiah, the king of Judah. Now the prophet Zephaniah gives the time of his prophecy as the reign of Josiah, king of Judah. Josiah reigned from 640 to 609 B.C. Now, 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 inasmuch as Zephaniah predicted the overthrow of Nineveh, an event that occurred in 612 BC, it is most likely that Zephaniah prophesied in the earlier part of Josiah's reign. Now, the book of Zephaniah 
like that of Joel, focuses on the day of the Lord. We say again, the book of Zephaniah, like that of Joel, focuses on the day of the Lord. Now, what is this day of the Lord? In the words of the prophets, now the day of the Lord is the day of God's wrath upon individual nations and upon the world. We say again, the day of the Lord is the day of God's wrath upon individual nations and upon the world. You see, when a nation goes so far in iniquity that its doom is sealed and final judgment is pronounced against that nation by God, that is the day of the Lord for that particular people. We say that again. When a nation goes so far in sin that its doom is sealed and the final judgment is pronounced against that nation by the Lord, that is the day of the Lord for that peculiar nation. Now, 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 these localized individual days of the Lord upon Israel, upon Judah and Jerusalem, upon Babylon, upon Egypt, upon Edom and the heathen nations in general, those localized quote-unquote day of the Lord were types of the greater day of the Lord's judgment yet to come upon the entire world. So those localized day of the Lord for individual nations like Babylon and Judah and Egypt were types of the greater day of the Lord's judgment yet to come upon the entire world. According to Isaiah 34, 8, Joel 1, verse 15, Zechariah 14, 1, Malachi 4, 5, and many other references. Now, prophecies of the local day of the Lord are often descriptive also of the universal day of the Lord at the end of the world. We say that again. Prophecies of a local day of the Lord are often descriptive of that universal day of the Lord, the end of the world, and the second coming of Jesus. You remember Jesus blended the predictions of the fall of Jerusalem with those of his second coming? Now, speaking of the day of the Lord as the second coming of Jesus, the Apostle Peter says in Second Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 10, Peter declares, but the day of the Lord, hear that phrase again, but the day of the Lord, says Peter, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then, he says, that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, he concludes, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and the new earth where it dwelleth righteousness. And so, for us, Peter says, the day of the Lord is the second coming of Jesus. When the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Back to Zephaniah now, not only does the prophet reveal the coming judgment upon Israel, the day of the Lord, he also warns of punishment to come upon other nations. However, friend of mine, if Zephaniah alarms by his severe judgment, it is only so that the people may repent, may seek righteousness, seek meekness, and thus escape the punishment. And so in that text, the prophet presents the path of safety when the day of the Lord comes. In in our passage for today, the prophet Zephaniah presents the path to safety 
when the day of the Lord comes. He says in Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 3, he says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. The prophet addressing those who claim to serve God and obey his law encourages them to hold firm to God. You see, though Judah had become apostate and immoral, there were still those who remained loyal to God. God always has a faithful people. God always has people who will serve him in spite of what is happening around them. Isaiah the prophet echoes this same call to seek God that was made by Zephaniah. In Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 3, Isaiah says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Let her return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. O oh, friend of mine, in the description below these videos, you will see the steps to salvation. Let us love and serve Jesus so that Instead of being afraid of the day of the Lord, we would be more zealous in sharing the gospel of salvation, thereby helping to hasten the day of the Lord when Jesus will return to take us to our heavenly home. May God help us to get ready and to stay ready for the day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Thank you so much, Lord, for your promise that you will return very soon to take your faithful and loving children home. Thank you for all those who are listening to these presentations of your word. Bless them, Lord. And may they help all of us to get ready for your soon return. Father, we are presenting before you these prayer requests. We are praying, Lord, for Basilia Smith, who asks us to mention her name. And we pray, praying, Lord, for Shauna Smith. We are praying for Basilia, Lord, who is not well, and ask that you will touch her and grant her healing and restoration. If there is some fruit or some vegetable that she can use to feel better, please direct her mind to those remedies. And Father, we pray for Shauna Smith, who is writing her exams. Grant her success and help her to know that the same God who gave Daniel wisdom and knowledge is there to give us wisdom and knowledge also as we pursue knowledge in school. So bless Basile, Lord, and bless Shauna in a special way. And Lord, we are again praying for Melissa that you will continue to bless her and grant her healing and restoration. And again, Lord, we praying, Lord, together with this individual who is requesting that we intercede with her, that she's requesting the Lord's continual protection, his guidance and his grace. She's requesting his financial support and help in our academics and our career journey. Father, this individual is asking, Lord, that you grant her spiritual strength and emotional strength and that you'll grant her your forgiveness. This person is asking their God that you will help her to always remember, to help him or her to always remember that you are there for him or her through all the changing scenes of life. And Father, we're joining together with this person to intercede for, for her friends, especially those who are having a difficult time. May those friends remember that there is hope in Jesus and that there is strength in his name. We pray the Lord that you will Bless her, Lord, and keep her from potential enemies, whoever they may be, and may she find protection and claim your promise. In Psalm 34, 7, where you said, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And so, Father, we pray that you will be with her, continue to hover over her life, and help her to sense your love always. 
Bless this person, dear Lord, and may she know that you promise never to leave us nor forsake us and help that she would remain in your love by prayer, Bible study, church fellowship, sharing our faith and witnessing, and in general, remaining close to you. Bless the others who have made prayer requests, dear Lord. May all those requests, Lord, remain before you, and may each of us so live that you will have no problem answering our requests. Father, keep us faithful to you until the day of the Lord comes. The second coming of Jesus is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.